Hey everyone, I am here with Allison Chisholm. Allison is the founder of Choice Words, and Allison works with businesses to help craft their story and provide some strategic advice to help her clients effectively communicate their offer and gain new business, as well as really just start shifting perspectives of her clients and even their target market. So recently, Allison and I were chatting and we were really just talking about the crossover between having effective strategic copy for your business and how that also just aligns with your brand visuals, such as photography. So we decided to start giving you a few tips and tricks on what you guys need to do to start aligning that strategic content to establish your brand presence through visuals. And our main topic today is just how do you do that on LinkedIn posts? So I want to welcome Allison, and I'm excited to chat with you today about this. I will hand it over to you to talk about your expertise and how you align the copy with LinkedIn posts, how that works with your visuals, and figuring out how do people get started. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. The um, The reason I want to talk about LinkedIn and posts particularly is LinkedIn can be that social media outlet that if you are a business to business uh, kind of operation, you tend to overlook and it's really essential to be there. And the, the joy about LinkedIn is you know that you're in a space with other businesses who are looking to learn. And that's what your posts can do. You can help them learn more about what you have to offer and what your area of expertise is. LinkedIn can be a great way to establish yourself as a thought leader. And you're going to do that through posting. And the key thing is the posts that you put on LinkedIn are going to showcase the value that you bring. And that may not always be um, entirely a post written by you. It could be something that you're sharing. And one of the things that I find with a LinkedIn post um, is the visuals help people look at them. So this is one of those situations where you may want to write about your area of expertise, but you've got to find the right visual that goes with it. People who post without any kind of visual tend not to get seen as much. They have a lower level of engagement. So the visuals are really key. Um, and this is where working with somebody like Carrington can help because they provide um, another way of thinking about a story visually. And that may be what gets someone to stop and read your post. They see the image first. Um, when I post on LinkedIn, I will either come up with something I want to talk about. Um, lately, I've been posting more on issues around employee communications and workplace challenges. And illustrating that can be a little difficult. One post I did not too long ago, I had a photo that I actually had taken myself of like a really foggy forest. And it was talking about communication that is not clear. You know, people can be kind of foggy in terms of understanding. Uh, we sometimes feel like we're communicating in a fog in the workplace. And so I thought that might work. And I hope that it sort of got people to stop and think a little um, and then read. Uh, but that is a challenge that I think a lot of writers have is finding an appropriate image. So another way of getting around that and of course you want to try and collaborate with all the friendly photographers that you have. Uh, but if you offer an opinion and share an article, the article often comes with a photo. Mm -hmm. And if you put a link to the article um, in your post, sort of automatically get a picture that goes with it. But just sharing an article is not enough. You really have to have some opinion about it or what I tend to do is try and summarize it because I recognize people may not read the article. And in providing that summary, I'm helping them understand my perspective on the content and the fact that I think this is valuable. This is something worth learning about. Another thing about a LinkedIn post is you can talk about something that you've written on your website. Um, sometimes you can write a blog and then riff off of that, take parts of the blog sort of as a pillar, and then you can refer back to the blog in your LinkedIn post. So you may take one aspect of what you've written about in your blog and post on that. And you could actually create a couple of LinkedIn posts out of one blog that way. So it's a really good way to 
reinforce those ideas, uh, possibly to a wider audience, because LinkedIn connects you with literally millions of people. Uh, so those are different ways to think about LinkedIn posts. Really being present on it does mean posting on a fairly regular basis. And what fairly regular means should be at least once a week, if not twice. Um, it's LinkedIn is not as demanding as some other social media platforms, but I think if you want to continue to appear in people's feeds, you need to be posting at least that often. And that's why if you come up with a mix of your own content, drawing on a blog or sharing someone else's work, but with some a thoughtful response to it, those are ways of coming up with content for your LinkedIn. And I've been told to sprinkle in a little bit of information about your own business or an offer that you may have so that there's a little bit of a call to action. It's not just information. It's information that you actually want them to take action mm -hmm. on. Um, but those are a lot of different ways to use content in an informative way, a way to engage with people who might not have heard of you otherwise. Lead with your words, but be sure to have an image an appropriate image, an attractive image. And if you're stumped on what to use, talk to a photographer. They probably have a few good ideas about it. No, that's exactly why like people like you and I have great crossover because we work on, like I said earlier when we were chatting, two different sides of the brain. So you have all the amazing words you can write. And I'm the one who's going to say, this is how we convey that in a visual standpoint, that's going to be an ooh factor, right? And it's that visual ooh factor that like makes people want to read, you know? So I always think it's important for people to realize that these things do correlate together. It's not just, oh, I need good copy or I need good photo or I need good this. It's how do they actually align together? So I think that was really helpful and some really great tips and tricks for people to start getting started and thinking about LinkedIn posts a little bit differently. But if anyone is interested in chatting more with you about that service, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? I would love for them to visit my website at choicewordsonline.com. I have a contact page there and there's even a way to get on my calendar and it'd be great to have a conversation. It'd be a great way to start. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Allison. It was a pleasure thank to chat you. with you and can't wait to chat again soon. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it.